Hey traders, Chris Power here. Welcome to the Weekly Outlook. It is Sunday night, doing the Weekly Outlook a little bit early because I'm heading to a conference this week in Orlando, Florida. It's going to be a double whammy. Uh, be down there for a nice 2020 kickoff event. Uh, also have some friends and colleagues in the old PGA business for the PGA show in the big Orange County Convention Center. So it's going to be a busy week. It's going to be a fun week. And news-wise, in the financial markets, also going to be a busy week. Let's take a look at that in just a moment. Tons of great feedback coming in from my first module for the Keep It Seriously Simple video series. Again, this is a free video series that I'm posting on YouTube and Instagram and Twitter. Links going directly to my YouTube channel. And a lot of feedback coming in on questions, comments, and things that people want to see. So I'm here to help any aspiring trader, any seasoned trader, anybody that is in any financial market to be more consistently profitable. And I'm doing it with free education. So leave a comment, leave a like, and also pass this along. Uh, I just read an interesting article about, you know, we've all heard of word of mouth advertising, but there's also word of mouse advertising. So feel free to send, you know, my channel link over to some friends or people that are in your, you know, respective trading communities. I would love the extra feedback and the eyes and ears to be able to reach and help as many people as possible. So Paul, I heard your comment on, uh, you know, doing some videos on brokers and platforms that is certainly coming within the Keep It Seriously Simple modules. Frank and many others, the biggest question that I had was how do you build a small account? So I touch on that in module two, which is going to be live at 12 p.m. Eastern time on Monday, the 20th of January. So if you are a subscriber, uh, you get notifications to your phone on when my videos hit my YouTube channel. Uh, you'll see that pop up at uh, noon on Monday, or you can just check my channel and see that video drop. So it's going to be module two equity management and growth. And again, it's an overview video. I have a lot more specifics because it's not just one 10 minute video that's going to explain how to grow an account and everything you would possibly have to do in order to achieve that. Make sure you stay tuned and make sure you keep those comments coming in. Uh, Ken was asking about using indicators. Ed's asking about MetaTrader 4 robots and troubleshooting them. Uh, price inefficiencies, visuals. I had someone ask me about my pockets course. David, adding to trades, positioning. Sean Dale, one thing I would reach out, if there are any traders out there, any traders in any financial market, if you are in the central Texas area, there's one trader out there, Sean Dale, that was asking for some peers to get together and uh, talk shop in trading. So uh, feel free to look up or look through my comments section and look up Sean Dale and drop him a line if you would like to uh, get together in central Texas. Eli was asking about news and Ken was asking journaling and trend trading patience. So all things coming in, that was all from just module one. So clearly uh, I'm listening to the feedback and I will include these. And again, it might not be within the essentials and foundation that I'm building for the Keep It Seriously Simple. Uh, a lot of traders have a lot of questions, but again, I'm here to deliver education and uh, I will answer as many questions as I possibly can. So uh, like I said, word of mouse, if you spread this channel out, if you uh, pass this along to friends and peers and uh, any other trade groups you have, that would be fantastic. And remember that module two on equity management and growth is coming to my YouTube channel at 12 p.m. Eastern time on Monday, the 20th. One final segment here before we go into the charts. Here's how you can find me out there on social media, Instagram at pulver.chris, Twitter at pulverchris, Facebook and YouTube, just look me up. That's what I look like. And feel free to drop me a comment, leave a like, and get those notifications for videos like this and many more. All right, time to get at it. Here's a look at the Forex Factory calendar for the week. Monday is a U.S. bank holiday with Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Uh, then we have high-impact news for the Bank of Japan, Outlook Report, Monetary Policy Statement. And I'm not sure if that's actually going to be a rate decision. Let me check the medium and low impact and see if they're actually doing that kind of three-hour window. Yep, there's the uh, BOJ policy rate expected to stay the same at negative 0.1%. Uh, I'm going to go back and filter just the high impact. There's also a rate decision from the Bank of Canada on Wednesday. That is at 10 a.m. Eastern Time and 11.15 press conference with the BOC governor. Uh, again, rates expected to stay the same at one75 uh, the CAD is also going to be tied tightly to oil, which took a big spill last week. We saw oil up around $64, $65 and is now down below $59, $58. Uh, next level supports around $54, all the way down possibly to $51, depending on what oil prices do. Uh, also, we have Aussie news this week. That'll be a nice little short-term pop at uh, 7.30 p.m. Wednesday evening. Thursday, ECB press conference, ECB rate decision. Expected to stay the same at 0%, looking for some Euro volatility and some CAD volatility this week. So I will certainly be watching for some short-term opportunities 
For anybody that's been asking me about how to join my classes or join me uh, in my trading room, I'm working on some direct links so I can offer some different tiers. Uh, there might be a demonstration or a trial like a one week or a one month. Uh, also upwards of uh, three months, six months, and 12 months subscriptions as well. Uh, but again, those links are coming soon, so stay tuned for that. This week, my Flex Trading Room, I will be posting videos on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, just really just running some live market commentary and what we have. I'm specifically interested in Wednesday, Thursday, because that's really the meat of the news this week. With the BOC, if we have any crazy movement on the CAD, I'm looking for it. Short-term movement also on the Aussie on Wednesday. Uh, I'm still looking for Aussie strength. I'm still looking for the markets to come alive a little bit more. We're, I mean, granted, we're only three weeks into the new year, uh, but we've seen a decent melt-up continue in the stock market. We have seen the Japanese yen be really uh, sh lower volatility, but trend-friendly uh, over the last couple of weeks to kick off this new year, and the month is still not done. So we still have some Japanese yen weakness that I would expect to continue, uh, provided the stock market stays on pace to close higher and higher and still stay bullish. Uh, the euro will likely de deliver some decent volatility on Thursday. So we have some good opportunities to look for some CAD, some Aussie, and some euro movement this week. Also, to cap off the week on Friday, everything coming out of the eurozone, French and German and eurozone PMI numbers, as well as the guard speaking at 4.30 a.m. Uh, wow, that's a busy morning there for the euro. I believe that is the World Economic Summit. Uh, yep, the 2020 World Economic Forum in Davos. Uh, I'm surprised that Lagarde is the only one that really pops up on the calendar. That's a lot of movers and shakers in the financial world that will be at that conference or at that forum. Uh, so we might have some headlines coming out this week. But again, pretty heavy news. CAD, Aussie, Euro this week. So hopefully the markets come alive. We are, like I said, three weeks into the trading. So let's get to the charts and see what we have lined up for this week. Uh, let's take a look here. I'll just start things off with the dollar. Here's the dollar index. Uh, dollar index has, as we expected, come back into a couple of resistance zones. If you can see my chart, all I'm really looking at in these yellow areas are rejections. So if we see a rejection here, rejection here, or rejection here, I am focused on trend trading opportunities on a weaker dollar. What is interesting on the dollar front is that the Fed has been pumping $60 billion back into the markets, and that extra liquidity is also leading to lower volatility. And that lower volatility, this lower volatility environment, is what is sustaining the strength in the dollar. That is what's sustaining, uh, the. I mean, the dollar has the highest yield. Even though the Fed has cut rates three times, they're pumping money back in. Central banks really have a chokehold on the market's volatility right now. But... If the Fed backs off or the Fed starts to not pump $60 billion, if they start to taper that down like they did back with Yellen as the chair, uh, I'm just trying to think that might be six or seven years ago now, uh, we will see, but it might be going into the election this year. Uh, I think that uh, the Fed is not an entity you want to fight with, but the reality is these are all technically great resistance levels for the market to start looking for selling dollars. Now, that's what I'm looking to do. Uh, I've talked about this for many weeks now. If the dollar starts to weaken and weaken dramatically, I do expect a big transformation in volatility. We should see a stronger move, Aussie dollar going north, Euro dollar going north, New Zealand, US dollar going north, and even the pound dollar from a technical side, despite the UK and the EU. I mean, the UK is officially supposed to be leaving the European Union by the end of the month, and then they spend the rest of the year working out trade terms. Uh, but even from a technical side, I like pound dollar looking long. Um, but like I said, my primary three, Aussie, New Zealand, and Euro against the dollar. So if we start to see the dollar caving from one of these yellow resistance zones, then this is the trend environment that I'm looking for, and it should be quite strong. So I hope we are going to see this in the coming weeks or uh, release in Q1. That would be fantastic because we were patiently waiting for this last year, and we really didn't get it outside of this little correction we had at the end of the month or end of December, which is literally the same thing we had back in 2018 to 19. This little correction right here in 2018 to 19 was December. Same thing was right there in December 2019. So uh, is it a repeat? Maybe, but technically speaking, it looks even better now for some more weakness in the dollar. Uh, oil, as I said, with the CAD news this week, uh, pay attention to oil as well. That could be the sneaky little dark horse move uh, off of our rejection from $65, I 
I'm still looking for a bear flag. Let's see what price does this week. If we have high to low, more indecision, expect oil to find a way to push lower. Um, you know, we're right at the backside of this trend line. If we have a bearish open for the week, if we see a bearish move here and any indecision, I would look for oil to continue to push down in this area between 52 and $51, All right? If we have a strong move here to kick off the week, again, look left on your chart. There's still a lot of resistance right around 60 to $61. So let's see how the first day of trading goes this week, or if it's more sideways and indecisive, the more time it spends on the right side of the trend line, the more likely we're gonna see this push lower uh, towards the mid to low 50s. I wish that was the temperature in Michigan, but it is not. Uh, let's go back to currencies here. Aussie CAD, I'll get to cryptos in a little bit. Uh, Aussie CAD still range bound between roughly 8,900 at the lows and 91.20 at the highs. We have a yearly pivot this year at 9180. One thing I continue to watch for is a chance to buy low and take some profit at the highs. If and when we get on the right side of this trend line, I will remain long on the Aussie CAD. Aussie Swiss. Type that in correctly. Aussie Swiss. Came back in to retest some lows last week. Still not at the same lows. Uh, like in this weekly chart, we have one, two, three candles here. Let's take a look at the daily. Major support around 6,500, 6,520. That's also historical lows on the Aussie Swiss. Uh, if we have a trend line break, holding some lows, getting on the right side of the trend line, this does look good to come back up into previous highs, which is right around 6,880. Uh, I am certainly looking at this spot right around 7,000 to 7,050. So I do remain bullish on the Aussie Swiss. We may not get the break of the trend line this week. It may want to come back down from this low and retest the low. We have seen the Swiss franc remain quite strong, even though the stock market has been melting up, even though the Japanese yen has been weaker, the Swiss has been stronger. So we've seen Aussie Swiss, Euro Swiss, Pound Swiss, even Dollar Swiss, CAD Swiss is dropping. But that's all in the near term. I think in the medium term, uh, the levels that the Swiss are coming to look primed for a basket move. That's actually one thing that I'll be talking about this week in my 2020 kickoff event. Uh, that is a big play on the Swiss franc this year. Um, and from a technical standpoint and the way the basket lines up, I think that the Swiss should get a lot weaker. And one primary pair that I'm watching is the Euro Swiss. But uh, anyway, I remain long and have some positions in on Aussie Swiss. Uh, I will certainly watch this trend line closely if we break it. Hopefully this is a higher low that's forming rather than forming this double bottom. But I'm prepared for this area to retest right there. If we retest those lows, what a great spot for a double bottom. And from there at least back to these highs and hopefully to this outer trend line around 7,000. That would be perfecto. All right, Aussie yen. Aussie yen, the melt up continues. And uh, we have that little jump to the upside. I'm looking at this, even though I'm connecting the highs here, it looks like a bit of a rising wedge. Are we heading higher towards 7,700 or even right here with past support around 77.50? So I am looking for Aussie yen to continue to go higher. Uh, even with a little news this week, the employment news, I still think this is a buy the dip and stay with the run to the upside on Aussie yen. Aussie New Zealand, can we finally turn the corner on this currency pair or are we going to come back one more time into these lows? Look at this support. Look at that support. Look at that support. Is this going to be future support right around 103 or 102.70? That remains to be seen. I'm still looking to stay long on this pair. So structure-wise, I'm watching this level. If we do push to the upside, I will be looking to add on little dips and pullbacks and trend line breaks, trying to get us back into 107.50 or all the way back up to the highs around 108.50. So I'm still bullish on the Aussie New Zealand, but again, prepared for major support to get hit. I mean, how nice would it be to have one spike to the downside, put in the bottom, and then from there, we just start going to the upside. I still have positions in to buy it right at the lows around 10300 and 10250. Aussie US dollar. I was filled on a pullback. Uh, we're at the back side of this channel. We're at the back side of this trend line. Hopefully this will remain. If not, expect this to also carve out some lows or retest the lows. Let's see what happens on the back side of this trend line. It may be a bearish pattern, which is right here. This I mean again, it's sometimes the market likes to get us confused on the right side of the trend line. Uh, traders could possibly see this as a bearish head and shoulders move to the downside. And that's fine if that is a bearish head and shoulders. 
I think the measured move would get us right back down to the lows back in here. That becomes support, and I would buy that low. I would look at this equal support remains, and we still see a move higher. Why? Because I expect the dollar to get weaker. And if the dollar gets weaker, the Aussie is one to recover really nicely. Um, but if we do not make that move to the downside, this would be a great week to show some moves to the upside. Let's get some new highs. Let's get on the right side of the trend line. It, it already is. Uh, but let's get some trajectory moving much higher on this one. Again, we need to see a weaker dollar. All right. Uh, CAD Swiss. I would welcome this pair to drop. Uh, it's still very tightly range bound. Uh, I'm trying to project this move to the downside. If we can get a run to 7,300 to 7,200, bring it on. Because I want to buy it there and I want to buy it lower. Give me one second here. I want to buy it lower and just focus on long term or medium term buying between 7,300 and 7,000. Uh, I would take these lows all the way down into 6,900. So basically, my plan for this is to buy it low, buy it low, and hang on to resistance hang on to resistance or hang on to the big levels, which we've seen price all the way back towards 8,000, right? But the CAD has to either cooperate with that as a weaker move uh, or the Swiss needs to continue to stay strong. CAD yen, this one is likely uh, to continue higher just like with Aussie yen. We're still in a channel move, expecting this to go up. Look left on your charts, previous highs, resistance around these trend lines. This is resistance, resistance, resistance. That puts us right around 8,600. Currently trading around 84 and change. So we still have some upside movement. I would look at CAD yen to stay long. Swiss yen as well. Also staying bullish on this one. Uh, I actually deployed a trend system this last week. It's my equalizer class. I put a trend deployment on Aussie yen, Swiss yen, Euro yen, and dollar yen. I'm still looking for these bullish runs to continue. Uh, Euro Aussie. This is another one that remains range bound. There are two ways to trade this. One I have a pending sell at 6365 to play this range. The other is if we get a confirmed break below 6,000, I'm looking to stay with the trend to the downside. So there are a lot of levels to the downside, but two things need to happen. One is we either hit these highs again that we can sell high or that we have to get a close below the support level at 1.60. And again, I'm looking for a daily or weekly close below that support. And from there, I would stay with the trend. I think this should also be a breakout. Uh, we can look at measured movements. We should be coming back into 5,500. Round number always strikes my fancy around 5,000. So we'll see if we can actually get a nice little breakdown to the south. Uh, but watching that range for right now. EuroCAD, we'll see some movement on this one this week. Uh, we're sitting right at equal lows around 4450. I'm still long in this one at 4457, currently up about 40 pips, and hopefully we're going to see a move to the upside back towards 47. There's a nice yearly pivot as well at 4870. So that's what I'm holding out for right now. This is only entry number one. If we go a little bit lower, I will buy it. I am looking for a bottoming pattern. If we're not going to hold these lows, I'm looking for some type of falling wedge bottoming pattern to get this pop back up to a yearly pivot. So uh, in the medium term, this should be a great trade for us going towards 4870 or possibly 1.50. Euro Swiss, this is one that I'm going to continue to pay attention to. We're at 10730 where we closed out last week. Uh, we are filling successfully this French election gap from 2017 between 107 and 106. Major support in my opinion, major bottoming in my opinion. Uh, even if this is a channel to fill this Fifth wave move to the downside. We should at least have a three wave correction. And from these three waves, I'm looking for something like this. Some type of one, two, three wave move back towards 1.10 or possibly 1.11. Uh, but I remain patient and my position is built off of equal lows around 108 and 109. So I'm staying patient, I'm staying long, and a 107, 106 major support for me that I'll continue to buy. Uh, Euro pound. I have a couple of pending orders on this one as well. Uh, in the trading room, we did not get filled yet, uh, but we are going to buy this at an equal low at 8,460, and as well as this low, which is really testing the lows during the UK election in uh, December of 2019. That's around 8,310, 8,320. So uh, they're small positions because you know the pound margin hasn't really changed with brokers. So small position here, small position here, and a stop area below. Uh, but we are looking to see if the pound will weaken enough in the short term uh, because the Bank of England has possibly been hinting at a rate cut and sometimes these things get priced in ahead of time. So if the euro pound starts to 
reflect that pound weakness. We should see this going higher towards levels around 89, possibly around number at 9,000. So we're trying to play this one off of an equal low for a small entry and equal lows again around 83 for a great buy low opportunity and just play the range. Support to resistance, support to resistance, resistance to support, support to resistance. If it stays in the range or even comes halfway back into this area, that would be fine as well. So we can buy here, buy here, make some profit halfway, keep the stop loss relatively tight on that euro pound. Euro yen, looking to stay long, still in a channel to the upside. Uh, looking left, we have levels around 120, almost 124, currently trading around 122 and change. So another 100 plus pips to the upside. Outer channel resistance is way up here around 125. So still looking for upside potential on yen pairs. Uh, Euro New Zealand. Euro New Zealand, we remain long. This is actually a fantastic weekly, uh, actually it's a daily harmonic pattern. Let's take a look at this one. Uh, this is here on the eight hour chart. That was a bearish harmonic that fulfilled. Uh, we are looking at the daily harmonic to the upside with a pretty conservative level. This is a 38% Fibonacci target within this harmonic pattern. Uh, that is around 200 plus pips away from current price. I think it's more than that now. Uh, it's around 250 pips to that conservative level. The 50% is almost 400 pips, and our fulfillment at the 618 is 525 pips. So lots of upside potential, and again, we are long from this pullback, and I have another pending order at the lows at 66.40. So we're in small. If it falls back down to these lows again, watching to hold the lows, see if we can work our way back up into that first target, second target, third target, anything in here means we're protecting profits and making anywhere from 250 to 500 plus pips. So I do like that trade to the upside. Uh, Euro dollar. Euro dollar ended up dropping back into the 111 handle to end the week. Let's take a look at the daily chart. Wrong daily chart. There's the daily chart. So a nice close on Friday last week to break this trend line. This does suggest that we may be falling back down into these lows. So this is around 110. If this is break and pause or a bear flag, this could be falling back into 110. That's fine. I have a small pending buy there. At these lows around 109, I have a small pending buy there. I will continue to stay kind of channel bound for right now. Uh, this continues to be very indecisive and very range bound, just like the dollar index is. But if we come into these lows, this is a great spot to start setting up a big move. This is a great spot to start setting up a big move. If you think about what that dollar index looks like, it's the inverse of this euro dollar. So if the dollar index comes up to a yellow zone before it drops, or up to a higher yellow zone before it drops, those movements will reflect the euro dollar going slightly lower before they rally. And I do think that the euro dollar can get back into this zone between 116 and 117. So I'm looking for those upside moves. Uh, this is really a big play on the dollar, and uh, I'm going to try to be as, you know, number one, as, as safe as I can be, but as aggressive as possible. Because I really think this is a big opportunity that might, you know, maybe traders won't be ready for. Maybe we won't be ready for it because the volatility will probably change and be very dramatic and very fast. So we might be, you know, waiting for a pullback. We might not get it. We might just bottom out here and run and flag and flag and flag. And it becomes very, very aggressive. Uh, and this might feel like a very straight up irrational type move. Maybe this is April, May of this year. Not sure yet, but still watching the levels in between 110 and 108. I am a buyer with small positions, but trying to go after a much bigger move based on a weak, well, weaker dollar. Uh, pound Aussie. I'm trying to limit some of the pound exposure, uh, mainly because of what's happening at the end of the month. If the UK officially announces that they are leaving the European Union, uh, and then it's down to trade terms and ongoing negotiations and talks, that's fine. Uh, that should stir up some volatility in the pound crosses. I still like pound weakness in the short term. Pound Aussie is sitting at channel highs. Anything that re uh, retests or fails off of these election highs from December 2019, I am looking to sell. Uh, if we just simply break here, that's okay. If we look for a break, a trend line, or a pause, look for more downside there. We have a lot of October inefficiencies on the pound crosses that I think can balance out nicely. So I'm not really a fan of the wedge here. I'd, I'd rather see it retest the highs and fail to give us a nice equal high sell. Uh, but if it just drifts lower, there are short-term opportunities to kind of scalp and stay in the uh, pound in the present and just stay with uh, what price has given us. Pound CAD, this one on the higher time frame. 
still very nicely range bound looking to uh in the, in the short term you know again if we fail off the highs if we somehow come back up here and fail that's a great spot to sell high if we come all the way back down to the lows what a fantastic spot to buy low anything in between is kind of a hit and miss i don't really love the pound cad where it's currently sitting uh, but if it has a high low indecision then we can look for a breakout either way but i would prefer that be a move from this high to low push back down and then find all this lovely support that we can buy later all right so we're still going to have to see some details on the pound pairs looking at price pound swiss same thing we have a really really nice inverse head and shoulders or a bullish head and shoulders left shoulder head to neckline we're falling back into this right shoulder i actually do have a pending buy around 2500 and another one around 1800 so hopefully i mean if this is anticipating the pattern something like this i'm looking for a right shoulder to form try to get back to the neckline that would be kind of leg number one of this trade if the neckline is not noisy then we're going to go right into that 127 zone which is why i have that box already there if the neckline turns out to be noisy uh, meaning that we come up here and we test the high and then we come back down one more time uh, we might want to take some profit at the neckline and then be prepared to re-enter at lows re-enter at lows and still stay with this trade you know just off of these lows from august of 2019 that was actually retesting uh, historical lows on the pound swiss so i do like that trade to the upside and i think in the medium term we're going to see some weaker swiss franc movements as well pound yen pound yen uh, it's kind of a toss-up trade this could certainly break and go higher come back down uh the yen is weak the pound is weak this one's a tough one to trade at this time so uh not really high in the priority list at this time pound of zealand i would like to see a retest of the high at 2.04 i'm not counting on that on that but i want to look at that opportunity to sell it nice and high we have our high at 2.04 retested and failed uh, we come back down look at this high to low consolidation again if it consolidates a little bit longer then expect this to give us a trade and when it breaks the channel we're looking to sell it if it comes all the way back up here to the highs looking to sell it all right so i'm looking for opportunities to sell nice and high in the pound uh, pound of zealand come back to this low come back to this area i mean heck come all the way back down to lows around 1.84 that'd be fine especially if we sold it nice and high uh, if it breaks right away this week be careful on that because we might just come back into lows and pop back up uh, so it looks better to me as a sell trade if it just keeps consolidating then we're looking at levels like uh, 2.00 or possibly the highs at 2.04 to sell all right and then pound dollar this one should give us a good opportunity you know one level that's incredibly important is 1.30 if price breaks below 1.30 expect it to be bearish okay now to me the bears are only in control until around 1.26 uh or as low as 1.20 but i really don't see that happening uh, i think that the dollar weakness will kick in soon enough even if it does come down into 1.26 1.25 i do have a pending buy there uh, if it comes all the way back down to 1.20 i do have a pending buy there so i am looking for pound dollar to go higher all right whether it's 1.26 as the kind of right tip low uh, or the equal lows around 1.20 i'm favoring bullishness on the pound dollar uh, new zealand cad this one is still range bound and sitting right in the middle so i'm going to leave this one alone for now uh, actually i take that back i bought this one last week i forgot we had a great uh, well we've been long in this one for a while we took some really nice trades in here made a lot of profit before the end of the year last year 2019 now uh, look there's still another like 190 pips to the upside to hit a 618 harmonic level at 8875 so i did take a small buy trade on this little pause uh, if we pull back again i'll take another small buy trade if we pull back again i'll take another small buy trade i'm expecting this to come back in to fulfill this harmonic and get to resistance around 9,000 so anything 89.50 to 9,000. if i am a buyer i'm going to protect my profit and from there i look to sell it and just stay in this larger range that's pretty visible like so let me zoom out let's take a look at the, the weekly chart right there so just really nice structure on this one to sell high buy low but for right now i am long trying to get that 8875 finish move new zealand swiss also some range bound structure i did get a buy trade at 6370 with a pending buy sitting at the lows 6215 uh, i think this is a nice one that sets up a trend line break come back and retest the trend line now let's go to the upside uh, this is a nice level these are nice levels outer trend line is nice resistance i'm trying to stay long i'm prepared for this to do the following 
it may drift back down into the same lows. It may drift back down on the right side of the trend line to fresh lows. But I'm still looking for this pop to the upside. Uh, nice levels around 6,600 or higher. So I'm long on New Zealand Swiss. New Zealand Yen, also not a bad one to consider looking long. Uh, although the New Zealand Yen looks like we might be facing some resistance in this channel. We're right here at this channel resistance around 7,300. So I'm not as adamant about getting long on New Zealand Yen because I already had a pretty good run to the upside. Uh, in the near term, we might see some resistance forming. Again, it's the Yen pair. It does do some really silly things. Uh, if it doesn't really hold resistance, it might just break and keep going higher. Look left towards 80. That's a round number. So this one's more wait and see on price. Uh, I still think there's upside potential to kick uh, retesting these highs. We have highs uh, really pre-holiday. Yep, December 22nd. Highs around 73.50, which was a perfect fill of a price gap from May 2019. If we come up to that level again and retest, it would be a great spot for equal highs and some rejection at the back side of this channel. This would be resistance, resistance again. What a great spot to fail at equal highs at 7350, and we have a short-term sell opportunity. Again, you can see that with very low risk, right? If we sold it here around 7350, stop area is really one candle. If it's one daily candle higher, you close out the trade. But if it rejects, 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 and falls, you're selling it nice and high with a surplus opportunity because it's not a lot of risk to the upside. It should be a hold in that level, at least for the channel. New Zealand dollar. New Zealand dollar, can we set up this head and shoulders? I hope we are setting it up. This is a left shoulder, head, neckline. Let's get this right shoulder to hold. Let's get this neckline to figure out how we can play the long move into this area around 7,000. 7,000, a nice round number. We might drift higher. We've had lots of drifts up into 73 and 7,400. If we get this run through 7,000, if this goes up into this level, this is a great trade to the upside and again, a great trade to the downside. We could be looking at just a nice clean range trade to buy low and a nice clean range trade to sell high and New Zealand dollar could pay us very nicely this year. Dollar CAD. Uh, you can also go outside and watch paint dry on the dollar CAD because that's about how exciting it is. It is a range within a range within a wedge within a wedge. We have levels of support at 1.30. If it stays above 3,000, it is still slightly bullish. Uh, we have heavy resistance around 3,300 to 3,350. This pair is terrible. All right, it's great for range trading. It's you know good for going next to nowhere. It's hitting pretty much every single daily pivot. Uh, the bears have to break below 3,000 or the bulls need to do something else. But 3,350 is really the next resistance zone. Other, other than that, it's just a buy low. If you bought it at 3,000 and it's not breaking below there, you're buying low with very little risk and you're looking for upside around 33 to 3,350. Dollar Swiss. Dollar Swiss did not close. Interesting, I just noticed this here on the weekly chart. It did not close below previous lows. We had a test of those levels, but that is a nice wick to the south. Uh, certainly interested in where this one goes for this week. Uh, I'm just a buyer. I bought it low. I'm buying it low. I'm buying it low. I'm trying to get price back into 1.00 on the dollar Swiss. Uh, I'm not in a hurry on this trade. This one might take a while. This one might come down into 95.50, 92.50, but I remain a long-term buyer on the dollar Swiss. Dollar yen. Uh, staying bullish in this one. I've, like I said, I had a trend system deployed last week. I'm going to stay bullish on this one until 1.14. I think we can just stay in this kind of melt-up zone, uh, buy the dips, buy the dips, and just see this thing continue to go higher. I don't see the Bank of Japan's narrative changing at all. I don't see the stock market really changing much. I don't see much derailing the stock market right now, even though we're seeing euphoric moves. But you know our P/E ratios out there in the stocks and the yield that the stock market offers uh, against traditional investments or against the bond market. I mean, the stocks just offer more yield, and they're way more attractive than anything else right now. So I think the dollar yen continues to run. 114 is really an, a huge level of resistance here uh, where I think that major resistance will actually sink in. Otherwise, I would just buy the dips and stay with it. Uh, dollar peso, this one is starting to sneak to the downside. Uh, I, I, I've been waiting for something. I think that this is a steady move going down towards 17.6. Uh, I'm not going to jump in and sell this. I think we at least have to have a pullback towards the back side of this trend line. Uh, this trend line starts back in, you know, it looks like September, October of 2018. Uh, if we do pull back and fail, reject off that trend line, that looks like a great resistance point to sell it. Uh, if it just continues to drift lower, 
I probably will not get much of a participation in that trade, and that's okay. Uh, sometimes the peso is, is awesome to trade, and sometimes it's really easy. Other times it's a bit slippery. Uh, I do want to sell this. I think this is a nice, clean breakout. We have lots of pivots, but I think I just need a pullback. One pullback works. One pullback and failure works. You know, sell the backside of the trend line. See if this wants to push lower with some trending opportunities to the downside. It, it's interesting that the dollar remains steady and resilient, yet the dollar peso is starting to drift a little bit lower. So uh, one that I'm watching, of course, but not actively participating in uh, at this time. Dollar crone. I want to sell the highs, but I'll wait. I think the euro crone has turned to me as a better opportunity. This rising wedge looks fantastic. If we come back up to these highs around 10.25, 10.27, I will look to sell. I will also sell much heavier on the right side of this wedge and try to target the initial base, which is around 8.8. .8. So I think the euro crone could offer a great trade for around 10,000 pips. So this would be a big one this year if it sets up for us. Uh, let's take a look at those cryptos. Bitcoin, uh, eight, eight, really 8,700. The weekly chart, take a look at this. We're only three weeks into trading in 2020, and we've had two of those weeks with a nice little jolt in the crypto world. So uh, above 8,150, I think this is bullish. I think this does have some momentum to the upside. Uh, I reloaded on some positions on Bitcoin and Ethereum and Litecoin and Ripple. Uh, I know that, um, I don't know, there's a, there's a lot more storylines developing. I saw that uh, banks in the UK are starting to open up lines of credit to buy cryptos now, which is nice. I know investment banks are starting to take notice and get in and start pushing things around. Blockchain technology is kind of coming back in full swing. So if that ends up transferring into some volume here, which is what I'd like to see, again, look at the technicals. We have a nice swing from 3,500 to 13,700. Corrections all the way from the high to the lows around 66. We're breaking this channel. We're breaking this corrective level. This looks like this correction is now hopefully going to see trend, correction, trend. Now, it might not be as amazing and roller coastery as it was back in 2017. But I think if the demand is truly there, we will see this go higher and we will revisit 13.7. I would love to see what happens at that zone. If we push through it, everybody's going to be super happy that this is breaking through. And I'm sure more volume will push it into those highs. And this might be one of the big developments in 2020 is that we might revisit those 2017 highs in cryptos. So the posture looks pretty promising uh, on other pairs like Ethereum, Litecoin. There are still yearly pivots higher. Uh, we've had a pretty decent run there. Ethereum had a big pop to the upside. Uh, that is a low at 143 and highs at 169. So a pretty good jump there. Uh, I'm, I mean, again, it's a nice inefficiency move. So we might end up coming back down to find that before we go higher. Uh, but we filled this level. We're coming back to fill this level. So I think that Bitcoin kind of leads the way. But Ethereum looks like we're coming off the lows. Watch for this type of structure here. Okay, nice trend line break. Let's see if we can maintain that. Litecoin, same thing. If I connect the dots and make a trend line, just keep it really clean. Are we breaking the trend line? It sure looks like it. So break the trend line, pull back, give us some minor correction, and then start to push higher. Uh, target one would be 103. I love this pocket here around 115. I certainly love the highs at 145. I love the highs even more in 2017 at $370, right? So, I mean, if we're looking at buying it at 50 with highs at 360, you're looking at six or seven times your money. So it's not a bad spot to consider if you're not in cryptos, you know, a, a simple Coinbase account is a nice way to have some digital uh, digital ownership of these uh, cryptocurrencies and uh, watch hopefully the value appreciate a ton. Uh, anything else? Ripple was sitting at, you know, 18 to 19 cents. We're back up to 23. Uh, this one still needs some work, All right? There's a huge trend line way out here. Now, it just might be time that helps this one break the trend line, but carving out some lows, I, I really would love to see this one take out this high. This is 31 cents. If we can take out 31 cents and sustain this run here on the right side, it doesn't matter how I draw that trend line. This looks a lot more promising on the right-hand side. So 30 to 31 cents is big. I think that would be our bottoming formation, that we see some right shoulder, right tip, things like that to start pushing higher. And uh, again, $3. You know, you're looking at 23 cents. You're looking at 2017 highs at three bucks and change. So food for thought in the crypto world. 
So that's going to do it for this week. Uh, again, news-wise, we have news from the Bank of Canada. Interest rate decision, not expected to change, but curious to see what price does and what the press conference reveals. Uh, employment change for the Aussie this week. Let's see what the forecast is. It could be, you know, plus 50, minus 50, and they forecast 11,000. But if it's uh, positive, negative news, there should be some decent volatility to pop on the Aussie. Bank of Canada, same thing. ECB, heavy news week for the euro with the rate financing or the main refinancing rate uh, and the press conference from the guard, as well as the uh, economic summit in Davos this week, which I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if there are more headlines coming out of that uh, later in the week on Thursday, Friday, as it gets underway. So it's going to be a busy week. It's kind of nice to see we haven't had a super busy week with high impact news for a while. I mean, light calendar the first week of the year, uh, you know, week before last week, not a lot. This is actually one of the busier calendar we, we've seen thus far, even though we start out a bit slower with the U.S. holiday. Stock market is likely to continue. BOJ, I'm expecting to stay on pace. Weaker JPY, look for some volatility out of the CAD. Uh, I'll be posting videos this week on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. No live classes for me this week. I'll be at the conference in Orlando. So. Uh, stay tuned for my module two with my Keep It Seriously Simple. That video comes out tomorrow, the 20th at 12 p.m. Uh, make sure you check out my YouTube channel for that and look for my videos in the Flex Trading Room on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Let's try to make some pips, everybody. Have a fantastic week. If you need me, send me a comment. There's where you can find me, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Traders, have a fantastic week. Enjoy installment two of my Keep It Seriously Simple video series and uh, keep the likes and comments coming. Talk to you all soon, everybody. Take care. Bye.